Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of Android 12. Last time, you may remember that I made these parts of Android 12's feet, um, which are 3D printed on my lulzbot AO101. You can check out that video and also xrobots.co.uk slash Android 12 for some pictures and words and more details. Um, these feet are curved on the bottom so that the Android can lean side to side. Basically, each foot part is two 3D prints stuck back to back, the bottom one being curved and covered with foam so that the Android can comply with the walking surface. So, since then, I've been doing um, some parts of the ankle and shin mechanism and basically working my way up the leg. So, here are two parts I've made so far. This is the ankle hinge piece. Um, it's still got the brim on from where it's printed. This was printed with a rectilinear infill, which is lots of zigzaggy lines, and it's printed about 60% uh, solid. This part is um, the bracket that holds a servo, basically, which will go in there like so. And that is basically going to make up the calf muscle. So this piece, as with all the other pieces, was designed in AutoCAD 123D. You can see there's some support material printed for all the holes, which I need to push out. And there's also this piece of support material um, to take care of this overhang. So this is the flat surface that was on the print surface. It was printed that way up. And then it prints this support material to hold up, hold up the bridge there. And there's another one there we can just snap out. There we go. So we just need to clean those bits up with a knife. And that makes the finished piece. So I've got another pair, which I've already fixed here to do um, some M6 studding with M6 locking nuts and washers. And obviously I've got two pairs, or at least two pairs of each piece, so that'll make up both legs. And as I say, the servo fits in that way round. And obviously the piece is symmetrical, so on the other leg we can put the servo the other way round. Um, and basically the spare piece, so we've got a servo on one side, the other side is going to be to hold a gyroscope. So um, it's the same piece obviously for both legs and the same with the actual bracket. So if we get one of the feet back, then basically this will go this way round and it will hinge on that point there. With the servo in the back which will pull to this point to make the effectively the calf muscle. Now before I showed you some shock absorbers, which are for radio controlled cars, um, and these are going to be hinged to the front point here and to here. So we've got a pivot which you can just about see across here. They're not going to be directly connected to that, they're going to be uh, attached to another hinged element which will also be attached to the servo with a spring. The main reason is to take forward pressure onto the shock absorber um, and similarly the tendon that attaches the servo to the back of the ankle will be um, a tight expansion spring or extension spring. So basically there will never be um, a lever, a hard lever attached to the servo arm to any points on the ankle so it cannot get back driven and it won't damage the servo if the android gets dropped or um, falls heavily. So basically that will become clearer once I've made the extra hinged element here that the shock absorber attaches to, which is the part I'm about to make, and then we'll assemble it. So here's the piece I've just designed in Autodesk 123D Design. Um, it's basically a hinge with several pivots that fits on that shin part, so probably best if I print this out and then I can show you where it fits. So here's the finished piece, well at least it's not finished, but the piece that's come out of the printer. Um, there was a big overhang, so you can see it's printed honeycomb all the way around, apart from there where there wasn't an overhang. So, uh, and obviously the brim, so we need to cut that off and clean the part up. That should pull off easy enough. And 
And this we need to cut. There's generally not much holding the support material on. There we go, so we just need to clean that up all the way round. See the hole for the pivot, and then I'll show you how that fits onto the shin. So here's the piece, now I've trimmed it. You should be able to see there's uh, two pivot points at the bottom and this one at the top with a gap in the middle. So I'm just going to assemble that onto the, actually it goes like that, onto the shin piece. So it pivots at this point, but I'm going to put that onto the semi-assembled one and we'll see how it works. So I've temporarily assembled the pieces with some of these rods just to hold the pivots. They're a bit loose, but I can still show you how it works. So here's the piece I've just made. As you can see, as the Android uh, ankle leans backwards, this piece pivots outwards. And it has to because this is um, basically doesn't get any longer. But as it leans forward, it causes the um, shock absorber to compress, which takes the load off the servo. Because if you can imagine this, the whole Android weight leaning forward, so as the other foot is taking a leading step forward, this one has to lead in this direction. So with the servo mounted, which will go in there, basically it means as the uh, servo pulls on here, it will also release this bracket. So that will cause the leg to do this. But as it loosens on here, the only way the uh, leg can lean forward is by compressing the shock absorber. So basically we're looking at something that's quite compliant with stretchy tendons um, and hopefully also active with a gyroscope that's going to sit in here which will um, make, bias the servo basically in either direction depending on what the motion of the shin is. So I still have to do something about the uh, toe piece there which I've, um, as I said before, left these four holes for so that I can build a module um, which will probably just be a spring that holds this toe piece straight. So I need to get on and assemble all of that with some proper sized um, bars and so on so the joints are a bit tighter, fit the servo and put a springy tendon in the back.